So I'm making a grilled peach crumble a la mode. But before I put the peaches on the grill, I gotta make the crumble. And to make the crumble, I have to cut up one stick of butter into cubes. You gotta have cold butter because you need that good chunks of crumbles to go on top of those grilled peaches. I'm going to use vanilla bean in my crumble. If you can't get your hand on a vanilla bean, you can always use vanilla extract. Right, I'm gonna reserve the other half of my vanilla bean because I'm gonna make a vanilla oil when the peaches go on the grill. I always like a crumble with a nut. Nuts just add that extra bit of texture. And I'm in the South, of course we gotta use pecans. If you say pecans around me, I will turn a deaf ear to you. <laughs> a half a cup of rolled oats three tablespoons of light brown sugar, a half a cup of white flour. The flour just acts as a binding agent. And a heavy pinch of salt. I'm gonna add a half a pinch of cinnamon. It's gonna complement that vanilla bean that I put in here. And it's just gonna give it that classic crumble taste. You don't want to crumble the butter too much because we need it to still have some of that substance so we can get those big chunks. Looks good to me and just spread it all over the baking sheet. That is what it's supposed to look like. This is why I use the cold butter to get these nice big pieces of crumble. Alrighty, my oven is preheated to 400 degrees. I'm gonna bake it for 15 to 20 minutes. I think my crumble is done. Ooh, look at that. I could just eat it like how it is, all right? I'm gonna take it outside and get these bad boys on my peaches. I'm assembling my grilled peaches. Simple little coating. A little bit of olive oil, a little vanilla bean, and just brush it. That's it. Hey, sis. Don't you hey, sis me, you're late. <laughs> well, you know how I go. Sweets before meats. How you doing? Oh, sweets before meats. That's so cute. What we got for dessert? Peaches. OK. Got a little bit of ice cream. Yeah. You know, got a little crumble. I'm going to place this on the grill face down, teach you a thing or two. You got some olive oil in there? Is got a little olive oil, a little bit of vanilla bean, you Nice. Know. I'm just gonna grill this, you know, okay. until it get those nice little chars and grill lines on there. About cool. three minutes. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. These are done. I love using peaches, especially peaches that are in season. They're sweet, they're juicy. They're at the peak of their freshness. Mm. Looks good. All right. Top it with some vanilla ice cream, a little crumble. Watch this. Watch that action. Nice. All in. <laughs> All in. This is really good, sis. So good. We're making classic Southern chess pie. I'm gonna show you how to make a super buttery flaky crust with a sweet yet tangy custard filling. I dare you just to eat one slice. We need to melt six tablespoons of unsalted butter. We also need to have one stick of cold unsalted butter. You need to have a third cup of water and preheat your oven to 400 degrees. We're doing this together, but at any time, if I get a little too far ahead of you, hit pause, Finish what you need to do and catch back up to me. Let's get started on our pie dough. Let's get one and one fourth cup of all purpose flour. Ooh. <laughs> you can level it off with your finger. Okay. Let's add to this a half a teaspoon of kosher salt. Okay. Give it a whisk. Let's grate our cold butter. It's important to have cold butter when making a pie crust or even making a biscuit. You want to create pea-sized bits of butter so it can thoroughly incorporate throughout the entire dough. And if your hands are a little warm and it starts to melt, don't worry about it. When it gets to that point, just dump it in there. We'll break it up with our fingers. Using your fingers, 
break up the butter until it turns into pea sizes. I love a good pie and uh, I'm a pie person because I like the crust. <laughs> the more crust, the better. And this is my go-to pie crust recipe. Super simple. That looks like pea sizes to me. We're going to slowly add in our cold water. You got to eyeball this. We're just adding in enough water until the dough forms a ball working it in with your, your hand. We need to add a little bit more. The dough should start to feel a little sticky. I think I need a little bit more. This should do the trick. Yep. We're gonna use a little bit of flour. We call this bench flour. And this is to make sure your dough does not stick to your surface. Okay. Roll it around in the flour. You could use any more. You wanna also eyeball this. Form a little ball. Okay. Take your rolling pin, also add flour to your rolling pin. I always use more than enough flour. We're just gonna roll this out until the dough forms about a 12 inch diameter. You want it a little bigger than your actual pie dish. Okay, that looks good to me. I like to judge the size of my pie dough by just putting the dish on top of it Looks like it's going a little bit bigger than the pie dish. That's enough. And gather it up. Make sure you have some flour on your hands. So we're pushing up the sides. And there's two ways you can crimp your pie dough. You can either use your fingers to do it, or you can use a fork. I'm using a fork for this pie dough. All right, you just want to make sure that your sides are pushed up. Pushing the pie dough up. All right. Take a fork and just crimp around. Just use your fork to go around. Okay. We're going to let our pie dough set up in the freezer for about 15 minutes. Hit pause and I'll meet you back here when it's done. It's been 15 minutes. Let's poke some holes in our pie crust. I'm using a toothpick. If you don't have a toothpick, just use a fork. Okay. Grab some parchment paper. Place it in the center. Get some pie weights and put them in there. If you don't have pie weights, you can also use dried beans. The reason we're using pie weights is to keep the pie down. Sometimes when you blind bake a pie, it tends to puff up. The pie weights eliminate that. Let's head over to our oven. Our oven is set to 400 degrees. Pop it in there, bake it for 15 to 20 minutes. Hit pause and meet me back here. All right, it's been 15 minutes. Let's head back over here. Okay. Let's take our pie weights out. Okay. Now we're gonna do a simple egg wash for the crust. That helps to kind of lock in that flakiness and it makes it golden brown and shiny. One egg into a cup with a little water. All right. Give it a mix. Okay. Using a brush, let's brush our edges. And if it falls down, that's okay. We're just mainly concerned about the edges here. I 
I can already tell how flaky this pie crust is going to be. It's my go-to recipe. Okay. Let's pop this back in the oven for an additional 10 minutes. Pop this back in here. Hit pause and I'll see you back here in 10 minutes. It's been 10 minutes. Let's take our pie crust out. I can already smell it's the start of something magical. <laughs> We're gonna let our pie crust cool completely. Let's turn our oven down to 325. And let's get started on our filling. And the great thing about chest pie filling, not only is it a smooth and creamy custardy filling, it has another layer of texture from cornmeal. Let's start off by pouring in six tablespoons of unsalted melted butter. Okay. One and one quarter cup of granulated sugar. Four eggs, the base of a custard, let's give it a whisk, breaking up that yolk. Let's add in that surprise element. Two tablespoons of cornmeal, yellow cornmeal. Let's add in a quarter cup of buttermilk. Two teaspoons of vanilla extract. and a half a teaspoon of salt. Let's give it another whisk. Okay, making sure all of your egg yolks are broken. Okay. That looks creamy to me. Let's grab our pie crust. It should be cool to the touch, so you'll be able to pick it up without gloves. All right, let's slowly add in our custardy filling. That is so pretty. So rich in color. It's gonna rise just slightly as it bakes. All right, let's head over to our oven. Let's pop it in the oven. The oven should be set to 325 degrees. All right, so let's let that bake for 50 to 55 minutes. If you peek in there halfway through and you notice that your, brown, your crust is getting a little too brown, tint it with some foil. After 50 minutes, I want you to go in there with a toothpick, put it down the center. If it comes out clean, it is ready, baby. Take it out of the oven and let it cool for three to four hours. In the meantime, hit pause and meet me back there. All right, our pie is nice and cool. Let's take some powdered sugar and just dust it on top. I like doing this. Doesn't that look gorgeous? Let's take a slice. I'm gonna go in right here. <laughs> Do you hear how crispy that is? Look how pretty that is. Grab a plate, put that on top. And if you want, 
you can add just a little bit more powdered sugar on top. Why not? <laughs> Let's give it a taste. Mm -mm -mm. Mm. Mm -mm -mm. Ooh, child. That is good. Wow, it's creamy, custardy. Get some a little bit of that tang from that buttermilk in there. That powdered sugar just seals the deal. That is what you call classic chess pie. I am making a peach upside down cornbread cake. Let me describe this to you. It's like having an upside down pineapple cake, but instead I'm using peaches. So I have a cast iron skillet here heated, three tablespoons of unsalted butter. Right now I'm making the syrup for my upside down cake. I have a third a cup of light brown sugar. I'm gonna add a teaspoon of cinnamon and a pinch of salt. Just gonna melt and stir until it's combined. I like to turn my heat off. Now, the thing about this is the sauce is gonna cook off in the oven, so even if the sugar hasn't completely dissolved, it'll do that in the oven. Now for the cake, I'm going to cream nine tablespoons of softened unsalted butter, three quarters cup of granulated sugar. All right, so creaming the butter and sugar basically means breaking it down until it becomes fluffy, light, and airy. That looks good. Now I'm gonna mix my dry ingredients. One cup of cornmeal, yellow cornmeal, and I have three quarters cup of all-purpose flour in here. It's more cake-like because there's flour in here as well. I'm gonna add a teaspoon of baking powder, and I'm also gonna add a half a teaspoon of salt. I'm adding three eggs, one egg at a time. And my last egg. All right, so I'm gonna add a little bit of the cornmeal mixture, and I'm gonna alternate between flour and milk. I have three quarters cup of milk. And add in the remaining of the flour and cornmeal mixture. That looks good. The first time I tried this recipe, I really didn't have like a pattern in mind, but I knew I wanted something circular and pretty. So I just took some of my peaches, I have three cups of frozen peaches. I went in a clockwise motion around the bottom of my skillet. Remember, this is an upside down cake, so I'm building this cake from the bottom up. When I serve it, I'm gonna have to flip this out of the cast iron skillet, so this will be what you'll see first. Pour my batter on top of the peaches. I'm just gonna smooth this out over the peaches. I have my oven preheated to 350. I'm gonna bake this for about 40 to 45 minutes, or of course, until you put a toothpick in the center and it comes out clean. My cake is done. I'm gonna grab it out of the oven. Oh my gosh, I smell that butter and that cinnamon. Ooh, that is pretty. It's nice and golden brown has those buttery, crispy edges. So I gotta let this rest before I take it out of the skillet. So my cake is out of the oven, it's been resting, now it's time for me to flip it. Mm. This smells and looks heavenly. Let's put my little decorative plate on top. I had to loosen up the sides a little bit with the knife to make sure it comes out perfectly, and I think it did. Mm. Mm. Look at this. Look at it, it's so pretty. The caramelization, the brown sugar with the peaches, and then it's that pretty pattern. I mean, it is beautiful. I'm making something that has been in my family for centuries, and it's called sweet potato pone. Sweet potato pone is something that you will find in the Gullah community as well as the Caribbean. I'm grating my last sweet potato. What I have here is about six cups of shredded sweet potatoes. I'm using the fine side of my grater because I want to taste the shreds of the sweet potato, but I don't want it to be like a mash, like when you make sweet potato pie. To this bowl, I'm going to add a third cup of light brown sugar, a 
about a quarter cup of molasses. We're just gonna eyeball it. Molasses is gonna give it a earthy flavor. Four tablespoons of melted butter. Whisk it up. This is not overly sweet. It's a minimal amount of sweetness. The sweetness is gonna come from the natural sweetness of the sweet potato. I'm gonna put this to the side. I'm gonna crack three eggs. I mean, the sweet potato pie, when you make it, of course, you have to add an egg to keep it together. And then you do the same thing in a sweet potato pone. This is my great-grandmother's recipe. And my great-grandmother's name was Seraphine Robinson, affectionately known as Nuncy. Why do they call her Nuncy? I have no clue. Just like her husband. His name was Francis Robinson, but everyone called him Snookums. <laughs> All right, so I whisked together my three eggs. I'm gonna add it to my bowl with the sugar and the butter. Half a cup of half and half and one teaspoon of vanilla extract. My great-grandmother, Nuncie, was known to add the zest of an orange to her sweet potato pone. And that's exactly what I do. All right, that's great. I'm gonna juice half of this orange. And now I'm gonna add my spices about a half a teaspoon of ginger, a half a teaspoon of cinnamon, a half a teaspoon of salt. I'm gonna really bring out the natural sweetness in the sweet potatoes and the sugars I use. And I'm just gonna grate some fresh nutmeg. And my grandmother uses the same spices in her sweet potato pie. Whisk it on up. Okay. I'm just gonna fold in the shredded sweet potatoes. All right. And fold it in. I'm gonna put my mixture right into a nine by nine casserole dish here that I've sprayed with non-stick cooking spray. If you've ever had old school Southern bread pudding where it's real dense, that's how this is gonna taste, but it's also gonna have those nice shreds of sweet potato. I'm gonna put some foil on top and bake it for about 40 minutes covered, and then uncover it and bake it for an additional 10 minutes so it gets nice and brown on top. My family will eat a sweet potato pone just like that but I like to add a little oomph to it. I'm gonna make eggnog whipped cream by hand. <laughs> so I've had a bowl that I've had in the freezer pretty much all morning, and I've also had my beaters in there. A cold bowl, cold beaters, you get a really stiff whipped cream, okay? I have one cup of cold heavy cream, two heavy tablespoons of powdered sugar, and I'm gonna grate some nutmeg in there. Just about a half a teaspoon of nutmeg. I'm gonna whip this up, then fold in the eggnog. All right, last but not least, I'm gonna fold in about a third of a cup of eggnog. And I'm just folding this in gently because I don't wanna lose the volume of my whipped cream. Miss Josephine Robinson, my grandmother, does not like change, so hopefully, I can win her over with this whipped cream. Nice and velvety. Make sure I get every drop. Grandma, I hope I did your mother's recipe justice. I've added a little bit of eggnog whipped cream. You tell me how that tastes. Oh. That's good, Ma? It's good. Sweet potato pone for everyone! <laughs> I made hummingbird bars. You've probably heard of hummingbird cake. Hummingbird cake is a spice cake that's normally made with like crushed uh, pineapple, some bananas. I thought it'd be really cool to turn that hummingbird cake into a bar. All right, so I'm making the shortbread crust for this hummingbird bar. All right, so that's two and a half cups of flour. I'm gonna use one cup of powdered sugar. Okay, a little nutmeg. Did I just sing that? A little nutmeg. <laughs> a little cinnamon. Nutmeg and cinnamon are traditional spices in a hummingbird cake. And about a half a teaspoon of salt. And I'm also gonna add a cup of unsalted butter, which is two sticks. So I'm cutting it up so it blends better in the food processor. Okay, give it a pulse. And I want this to form a dough. Make sure that butter breaks down. There we go. It has formed a ball. Now, I have a nine by 13 casserole dish that I've lined with some parchment paper, sprayed it with some nonstick so it comes out very easily. 
And it's gonna be a little sticky and that's okay. I have the oven preheated to 350. I'm gonna bake this off for about 30 minutes. Okay, while that bakes, I'm gonna make my cream cheese filling. All right, to this bowl, I am going to beat two bars of cream cheese, which is normally used in the frosting of a hummingbird cake with a half a cup of granulated sugar. Just gonna beat some air into this cream cheese and make it nice and fluffy. All right, so that's fluffy. I have three eggs. I'm gonna add them in one at a time to make sure each egg is completely incorporated. Okay, I'm gonna add a little vanilla. Give it one more mix. And it wouldn't be a hummingbird bar without bananas. So I have a really soft banana here that I'm going to mash into this bowl and then add it into my cream cheese filling. All right, so I've mashed my banana and give it one more mix. Okay, just wanna make sure that's thoroughly incorporated. Looks good to me. It's time to pull the crust out of the oven. All right, let that sit for about 30 minutes before I add my filling. My crust is cooled. Now I'm gonna pour my banana cheesecake filling on top. Now I need to add the iconic hummingbird flavors. I have a can of pineapple, crushed pineapple that I've drained and patted dry. I'm gonna sprinkle that across. Oh yeah, now we're cooking with hot grease. That's how country folks says now we're, you know, now we're cooking, now it's getting hot. So I have some dried pineapple rings here. These are dried pineapple uh, slices. It will get a little moist, but it will stay mainly dehydrated, but it's gonna add another layer of texture. I'm gonna pour some melted butter on top. Mm-hmm. That's gonna help moisten this bar as well. Last but not least, sweetened coconut flakes. I'm gonna put this back in the oven at 350 and let it bake for about 30 to 35 minutes. All right. Ooh, this is gorgeous. Look at the way that pineapple just melted into that cream cheese and the coconut got all toasty on top. Oh my gosh. Now I can add my candy pecans. It's gonna add so much crunch and nuttiness and that sweet, buttery molasses flavor. Lemon butter milk pie, a Southern classic. I have a cup and a quarter of all-purpose flour here in my food processor. I'm gonna add in a half a teaspoon of kosher salt. Give it a pulse. Okay. Now I'm gonna add in one stick of cold, unsalted butter that I've cubed. I'm gonna give it a pulse until I see the butter turn into pea sizes. All right, that's good. I have a third cup of cold water here. I'm just gonna pulse this, and the water just helps that flour come together and form a dough. Okay. After it pulses up with the water, it's gonna look like this, a ball. You can't roll it out in the form that it's in right now because it's really sticky, so it has to chill set up and then I'll be able to roll it out to form my pie dough. Have some plastic wrap here. Just gonna seal it up and let it rest in the fridge for about an hour. Now I'm gonna make my lemon buttermilk filling. In this bowl, I have one and a half cups of sugar. I'm gonna add in one and a quarter cup of buttermilk, one stick of melted unsalted butter, a quarter cup of lemon juice, the great thing about buttermilk pie is that it's a blank canvas. You can add any flavors you want. Give it a mix. Add in four eggs and a yolk of an extra egg. Now, let me tell you about buttermilk pie and where it came from. Buttermilk pie is a pie that was used, they call it a desperation pie. Like, 
basically getting your sweets and your desserts without having to buy expensive ingredients. And these are normal things that you would have around the house, the eggs, the buttermilk. My grandmother would always tell me stories of making sweet dough, like a sweet bread that was their dessert, you know? So something as simple as this, like having the eggs and the buttermilk around and making a delicious pie basically out of nothing. And I'm adding an extra yolk because this is more of a custard pie. I'm also zesting a lemon to add a little extra of that lemon flavor. All right, so I've zested one lemon. Now I'm gonna add a teaspoon of vanilla extract and a half a teaspoon of salt. Give it a mix. I'm just breaking up the yolks in here. And now I'm gonna sift in, then fold in a quarter cup of all-purpose flour. I'm sifting it because if you just dump the flour in here, you'll have big lumps. The flour helps thicken up the custard. Now I'm whisking in the sifted flour. All right, my filling is done. Let me grab my pie crust. My pie crust is ready. I'm gonna put some bench flour here on my work surface. It's important to put bench flour down so your dough doesn't stick to your surface. I have a nine inch pie dish here. I wanna roll it out till it's a little bigger than the pie dish, about 10 to 11 inches. All right, let me see if that's good. Yep, it goes a little further out than the pie dish, so that's a great size for me. And if you notice, the sides go out just a little, and that's okay. You just tuck it. And I actually like tucking because it makes it a little thicker. And I'm just gonna do a simple crimp. Just taking your thumb and pressing it in. My pie crust is done. I'm gonna add in the custard. This is the first of many pies I'll be making today, so I'm getting down and dirty and some flour. <laughs> My oven is preheated to 350. I'm gonna bake this for about an hour or until the center is a little jiggly, but the sides are set. All right, my final pie is done. This is my last and final pie and it's perfect. Look how pretty that is. Golden brown on the outside. It's nice and set in the center. The crust smells and looks amazing brown butter pecan pie. It's my spin on a Southern comfort food classic. That brown butter adds another layer of nuttiness and I also top it with a bourbon whipped cream. Before we begin, grab a stick of cold unsalted butter, preheat your oven to 400 degrees, grab a medium bowl and chill that for the bourbon whipped cream and also grab a third cup of cold water. Okay, let's get started on our pie dough. Grab one and one fourth cup of all purpose flour. Level it off. Add it to your bowl. Now, the fourth cup. We're going to add one tablespoon of sugar, granulated sugar, a half a teaspoon of kosher salt. Mix that in. And now let's grate in our cold butter. We're gonna grate in one stick of butter. And the reason we're grating in the butter because it distributes evenly when you grate it in. Yeah, and it's okay when your hand, your, of course your hand is a little warm, so it'll start to melt a little bit. Don't worry about that. As long as most of your butter is grated. Give that a mix with your fork, breaking up that butter. Okay. What we can do is just use your hand. Break up some of that butter with your hand. And we still have to add our water. And you want to use your fingers to crumble this up into pea sizes. This is a traditional pie dough. You can use this for any pie. Key lime, lemon, chest pie. That looks like pea sizes. Let's eyeball our water. The recipe calls for a third of a cup, but I have more just in case we'll need it. Just watch, I pour it in slowly at a time and then mix it in. 
What you're looking for is the dough to form a ball. Just keep mixing it around. This is the cold water we're adding. All right now it's starting to form a ball. Okay, and I'm gonna have to use about a tablespoon more. That's why you have to watch it. It depends on your kitchen, depends on how warm your hands are. Just adjust accordingly. You know that you've added enough water when your dough forms a ball. All right, let's clean our hands. Let's grab some bench flour. Flour your surface. Smooth it out. I like to take some of that flour in my hand, roll it around. You don't want to overwork your pie dough. Mm -hmm. Take a rolling pin, dust it with a little bit more flour. You want to roll this out to about 12 inches in diameter. You want it to be just a little bigger than your pie dish. Okay. All right, what I like to do is just, see, it's a little bigger, okay? Mm -hmm. Right, we're gonna take our pie dough and transfer it into our pie dish, okay? What you wanna do is fold over your pie crust up here. Just pull it up and fold it over. And it makes it much easier if you have some flour on your hands. Folding it over. Pull it up, fold it over. Pull it up, fold it back. This is a homemade pie crust, guys. It's not gonna be perfect. And that's the beauty of it. up some more and we're folding it back okay and just make sure it's even up there pull it up if you need to press it down right here pull it up press it down because it will fall into your your pie dish so you want to make sure you're pulling it up gently Okay. If you're not comfortable with making crimps, you can always use a fork to make a small little indent in your crust. But I like using crimps and I'll show you how to do that. Take your thumb finger, your index finger, and you take your index finger with your other hand and just press in, press in, press in. That simple. You're essentially pinching your, your pie dough. You wanna make sure your hands are not sticky when you do this because your fingers will stick to the dough. We're gonna pop our pie dough in the freezer for about 15 minutes, and the reason we're doing that is because we need our pie dough to set up. Let's head over to the freezer. All right, so it's been 15 minutes. Let's poke some holes at the bottom of our pie crust, and the reason we're doing that is because you need some air in this pie crust, otherwise it'll bubble up. Just tiny holes with a toothpick. If you don't have a toothpick, you can use a fork. All right, grab a parchment paper. Push it down. If you don't have pie weights, you can always use dry beans. And the reason we're using pie weights is because if you blindly bake a pie crust, it does have the tendency to bubble up. So in order for it to stay down in your pie dish, you have to put some type of weight on it, okay? All right, let's go over to our oven that's been preheated to 400. We're gonna bake it for 15 to 20 minutes. All right, hit that pause button. Meet me back here in 15 to 20 minutes. It's been about 15, 20 minutes. Let's remove our pie weights. Okay. 
Now we're gonna brush our pie crust with an egg wash. And the reason we are brushing the pie crust with an egg wash is to make it really pretty and shiny and it also helps brown the pie crust. I have some water here in a small bowl. I'm gonna add one egg, give it a whisk. Using a brush, I'm gonna brush the edges. Glossy pie crust. I am a pie girl. You know, the funny thing about it is that I don't like fruit in my pies. I am more about the crust. <laughs> I am invested in the crust. A warm crust with some ice cream, shut your mouth. <laughs> What I like to do is like, it doesn't matter if some of your egg wash gets at the bottom of your pie crust, just, I mean, it wouldn't hurt. Just use your brush and brush it around. Just make sure you get those edges, okay? What I like to also do at this point is get a paper towel and just clean it up a little bit. So once that egg wash cooks, it kind of gets brown on your pie dish, just clean it up. All right, we're going to pop this back in the oven for an additional 10 minutes. Hit pause and meet me back here. All right, let's pull our pie crust out of the oven. Oh, that's pretty. That is pretty. Okay. I'm going to let this cool. At this point, we also need to turn down our oven to three 50, okay. Now for the good stuff, the filling. Let's melt six tablespoons of unsalted butter. We're gonna melt this and brown it. Yeah. Brown butter is just gonna add another layer of nuttiness and richness to this pecan pie. Browning butter is just cooking it for an extended amount of time and you're actually caramelizing the butter. So it's gonna evoke this nutty, almost caramelized flavor. You definitely want to keep an eye on it at this point because it will burn. We want brown butter, not burnt butter. And I like to continuously stir to break up any of those brown bits that start to form at the bottom of your pot. Make sure your heat is not up too high. Medium high heat should do it. We're looking for a deep brown color. Starting to smell that butter cook. Whew. What you wanna do is take your wooden spoon or a spatula and break up some of that, those brown spots on the side of your pot. Scrape in the bottom. Okay, that looks good to me. It should be a light brown color. We're gonna turn your heat down just a little bit. All right, we're gonna let our brown butter cool. Move it to your back burner. While that's cooling, let's get started on the rest of our filling. We're gonna add one cup of light brown sugar to a bowl. We're gonna add one tablespoon of bourbon. If you don't like alcohol, you can skip this step. That bourbon is gonna cut through that sugar and molasses and corn syrup very nicely two teaspoons of vanilla extract. A half a cup of corn syrup. And a quarter cup of molasses. Wouldn't be a Southern comfort food classic without molasses. <laughs> Give it a whisk. Okay. Now we're gonna add in our eggs, three eggs. Give it a whisk. And if you've ever had pecan pie, you know that's a really rich and sturdy pie. Adding the egg helps create that consistency. Okay. All right. Now we're gonna fold in our pecans. We have 
two cups of pecans, and a half a teaspoon of kosher salt. Mm -hmm. Okay. Let's fold it in with the wooden spoon. If you have a spatula, you can use that as well. And don't forget about that brown butter. It should have cooled by now. We're gonna add that in. Slowly pour it in and fold. Make sure your egg and syrup and the butter and the sugar are all mixed in thoroughly. Okay. Keep folding. All right, that should be good. Let's pour our mixture into our pie crust. How gorgeous is that? Look at that color. Let's pop this in the oven at 350 for 40 to 45 minutes. Hit pause and meet me back here. All right, let's remove our pie from the oven. That smells incredible. Ooh, and it's just as pretty. Look at that. I know you want to dig into this right now, but we got to let this cool, hit pause, and meet me back here when it's cool. Our pie has cooled. Let's start on our bourbon whipped cream. Remember that bowl I told you to have chilled? This is why. We're going to add one cup of cold heavy cream. We're going to beat this on high until it forms soft peaks. And if your kitchen is a little warm, you can also chill your beaters in the freezer with your bowl. The reason why we have our bowl chilled and as well as the beaters chilled is because we need to stabilize this whipped cream. We're not adding any stabilizers like a gelatin to it, so the only way that it'll form some type of structure is through being chilled. I like to keep moving the bowl around, getting the sides. And you should see, your whipped cream should start to double in size. Okay, let's see, soft peaks, okay? Now we're gonna turn our mixer on low and add in two tablespoons of confectioner sugar. I'm gonna add in a quarter teaspoon of salt. Your mixer should be on low. Okay, let's stop it. I'm just gonna scrape down the sides, the spatula, and now we're gonna add our bourbon. One tablespoon, I mean, bourbon and pecan pie, why not? Okay. Instead of using the mixer, we're gonna fold in our bourbon. And of course, if you're making this for your family or kids, you can omit the bourbon. Okay. <laughs> the only thing left now is to try our brown butter pecan pie. All right, let's slice our pie. I don't know which side I want to go on. The crust is really thick on this side. I'm gonna go over here. Use a knife. Ooh, did you hear how crispy that pie crust sounds, oh man. All right, let's plate our pie. Oh man. Look at that. Okay, let's get some of that bourbon whipped cream and top it off. A little dollop on top should do the trick. Mm hmm. Let's try it. Mmm, 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 mmm. Makes you want to do a happy dance. Wow, that's good. That brown butter in the pie with the pecans and that brown sugar and the molasses is buttery. It's nutty, it's sweet, and then the whipped cream just cools it off on top and it has a little hint of that salt. This is great. A Carolina mud pie. It's a no-bake pudding-based pie. It has a chocolatey crust at the bottom, 
a little layer of uh, chocolate at the bottom, some pecans, you got a pudding that goes on top and whipped cream on top of that. Muddy, chocolatey, amazing. So I have 22 sandwich chocolate sandwich cookies here, putting into my food processor to make the crust. Why 22? Because you need the butter to chocolate cookie sandwich ratio perfect. Because if it's too much chocolate sandwich cookies and not enough butter, it's not gonna come together and you're just gonna have a crust that's gonna break apart, okay? Get this thing going. Right, forgot my salt. A quarter teaspoon of kosher salt. Let me grab my melted butter. I have four tablespoons of unsalted butter. You'll start to see the crust come together. Ooh, it smells so good. Chocolate and butter and salt, mm. I have a nine inch pie dish. And you see why it's called a mud pie? The crust looks like fertile soil. All right, I'm gonna use the back of my measuring cup here to smooth it on out. I'm gonna let this set up in the freezer for about 30 minutes. While this is in the freezer, I'm gonna get started on that chocolate layer. So I'm gonna heat this to medium high. I'm just making a simple chocolate sauce. I have four ounces of semi-sweet chocolate chips. I have a fourth a cup of sweetened condensed milk. It's gonna be a sweet chocolatey sauce. A tablespoon of vegetable oil. This is gonna help keep it nice and loose. All I'm making is a, like a chocolate shell. And you know, you can buy this in the store pre-made, but I'm telling you, once you make it at home, you'll never buy that stuff in the store again. All right, this is done. Let me turn my heat off and grab that pie crust out of the freezer. All right, my pie crust is set up quite nicely. I'm gonna take a spoon and get some of this chocolate out. I'm just gonna spread it over the bottom. This is a rich, decadent pie. I am a chocolate lover. I actually prefer chocolate over like candies. Give me chocolate any day. It's like every time I eat something that's a little salty or something like I eat dinner, I have to have chocolate to follow it up. And as soon as it hits that cold pie crust, it started to set up and it's already hardened. Look at that. I have a quarter cup of chopped pecans. This pie has some serious layers. So that buttery crust and then that layer of, of hardened chocolate in those pecans is gonna give you tremendous crunch. I mean, this is gonna be crunchy and smooth with that pudding on top. All right, I'm gonna set this to the side and get started on my pudding. I'm making a simple pudding mixture and don't judge me, yes, I am using box pudding. I mean, sometimes, hey, box pudding works and there's nothing wrong with it. I have one large box of instant chocolate pudding. I wanna whisk in one and three quarter cup of cold milk. That's how that pudding is gonna set up. Super simple. If you wanna make your pudding from scratch, you can. I'm gonna make it from the box and it's gonna taste just as good. My pudding is starting to set up. That cold milk does the trick. Now I'm gonna fold in a half a cup of whipped topping. Smooth it out with my spatula. I'm so excited about this. I mean, I really, guys, I'm telling you, I am a chocolate lover. All right, I'm taking some of that whipped topping I have left over. I'm just gonna put a little something in the middle of that. Giving it just a little zhuzh in the middle there. Not your grandma's bread pudding. I'm starting off with six eggs, this entire quart of heavy cream, two cups of white sugar, two cups of brown sugar, one tablespoon of cinnamon, teaspoon of ginger, gives it a nice little kick, cup and a half of raisins. Give this a whisk. All right, I'm gonna put this to the side and cut my French loaf. I've used different types of bread. So whatever bread you got in your house, you can make bread pudding with. Just make slices like this, and then just cut them up into four equal chunks, just like that. One last ingredient, two sticks of melted butter. What is bread pudding without butter? 
and I make sure that it was nice and cool because of course you don't want to add hot butter to eggs. Mix it up. Mmm, it's got a whiff of that cinnamon and that sugar. I want to make sure that every piece of bread gets some love. All right, spray my baking dish with a little canola. I'm gonna pour this directly into the baking dish. Oh, that looks great. I'm gonna put it in the fridge for about an hour. This looks amazing. So before I put it in the oven, I'm gonna just sprinkle a little bit more white sugar on top, and that's gonna help it get nice and caramelized. So I have my oven preheated to 350. It's gonna bake for about 45 to 50 minutes. My bourbon sauce for that bread pudding. So I've got three tablespoons of butter melted. I'm gonna add in about two cups of confectioner sugar in here. Get that nice and whisk. I'm gonna add in a little bit of milk, just a little bit to make it nice and smooth. A pinch of cinnamon, just to incorporate some of the flavors I used in the bread pudding. All right, and last but not least, bourbon. You really want that bourbon flavor to, to be the star of this sauce. My bourbon sauce is together. I'm not going to pour it on the bread pudding right now. I'm going to wait till I plate, pour that bourbon sauce on top, add a little whipped cream on the top, send my guest home with a bang. So you got that oven occupied. The slow cooker is a fabulous way to make your desserts. I am going to make a slow cooker cobbler and I'm using black cherries. I love using cherries and cobblers because they're so meaty and juicy. So I have some black cherries that I've thawed and I've reserved the juice from the cherries because I want to make a nice syrupy sauce with that. And that's a half a cup of granulated sugar, a quarter cup of cornstarch, a half a teaspoon of cinnamon, a quarter teaspoon of nutmeg, I'm gonna give it a whisk, then add three quarters cup of the reserved cherry juice. I decided to make a cobbler because what's more Southern than a cobbler? And I thought it would be better to use the slow cooker so I can focus on everything else that I need to make. So you got that oven occupied. The slow cooker is a fabulous way to make your desserts. And as this gets nice and hot, it's gonna turn into this beautiful cherry syrup. And I'll pour this back into the slow cooker with those thawed cherries. Mix that around. All right, gonna make my topping. And I decided to just kind of lighten it up a bit. I'm using some reduced fat milk and a little less sugar than I normally use, but still great nonetheless. So for my dry ingredients, I'm using one and a quarter cup of all-purpose flour, one and a half teaspoons of baking powder. It's gonna be fluffy and airy. Half a cup of granulated sugar, a half a teaspoon of cinnamon, and a quarter teaspoon of salt. Give it a whisk. All right, so I've mixed my dry. Now for my wet, one egg. And now I'm adding two third cup of reduced fat milk. I have some melted butter. That's about three tablespoons of melted unsalted butter and a little vanilla extract. Give it a whisk. Break up that egg yolk. And now I'm going to add my wet to my dry to make my batter. All righty, so I'm gonna add my batter to the top of this. Okay, so I'm gonna cover this and cook it for about two and a half to three hours on low. And when it comes out and it's nice and warm, I am gonna serve this with a scoop of ice cream. 